Hello and welcome to Small Talk. We're here today in Munich at InterSolar Europe to look at the latest innovation that SMA has to offer in 2013. I'm at the SMA booth right now together with my colleague Jens Eiko Birkholz, who is our specialist for the fuel safe solution. And Jens, thanks for joining us first of all. Yeah, perhaps Perhaps you can give us a quick run through of this system and how this functions. Yeah, sure. So um, basically in a PV diesel hybrid application, first of all, you have some industrial load, which could, can be a mining facility. It can also be a hotel resorts, for example, in remote islands or any other type of industries. Those systems are typically um, supplied with power produced by diesel gensets. Yeah, the main issue those genset operators has, have is that they are suffering from high diesel cost and therefore the main idea is to upgrade this system with PV in order to lower the operational expenditures. So um, in order to do that in a smart and efficient way you need some um, communication device between the PV and the genset. Um, this smart communication is the SMA fuel safe solution. So, and the fuel safe controller, so to say, um, consists of three parts. The first one is um, a data acquisition module, which measures the load and the grid state variables like frequency and voltage, transmits this information to a main controller module, which can be seen as the brain of the overall um, solution. The main controller also gets all required um, genset information, like um, spinning reserve, minimum genset load, and so uh, forth and computes a set point which is transmitted to the PV inverter, which can either be a sunny tri-power or sunny central. Meaning, we can secure at any time that not too much PV is fed into the uh, diesel grid, which would um, increase the frequency, would increase the voltage, and in, in the worst case would uh, cause a breakdown of the system. This must be um, accounted for, and therefore, um, we give, give this set point to the PV inverters in order to um, basically uh, account for two things. The first one is secure the overall system stability at any point and the second one is to feed in as much PV power as possible adopted to the specific needs of the load and the um, remote facility which needs to be uh, supplied with power. Interesting. So is this a system that is used in Europe, or you mentioned remote areas, uh, what are the typical countries that this system is used in and why is it so interesting, so interesting for those regions? Um, so basically it's not so much a business case for Europe, since we have a good uh, a net in, a grid infrastructure in place. It's more a case for, let's say, Africa, the APEC region, in, um, Australia or Southern America, where you have huge areas without a reliable grid infrastructure and there in those regions, uh, the gensets are running as base load 24-7 all around uh, the clock. Um, so this is basically the regions where we can prove that there's a real financial business case for the genset operator without any subsidies. So you mentioned the rising fuel prices. When does a system like this really pay off for the operator? Um, well, this depends on the project-specific conditions. Um, so first of all, um, the solar irradiation is a key parameter. Um, and the second one is also the overall um, system cost for the PV plant as such. So um, to give you just a feeling, um, typically in areas, sunny areas like, for example, India, Africa, Australia, um, one US dollar per uh, liter of fuel gives you a system payback time of, let's say, around five years, which is very attractive, especially if you consider an overall system lifetime of over 20 years. Okay, that sounds good. Well, thank you very much for the interview, Jens. Uh, thanks for joining us today. And thanks to all of you for watching this video, and we hope to have you back next time.